there's some waves up here. gang, Jan Hicks of Jan Hicks Creates here. It's time for another floss tube. And you know something? It's birthday month. We like birthday month. March has always signified to me the beginning of spring. So not only do I love it because it's birthday month, but this is when the crocuses start. And at least in my growing up, and most of my life corner of the world in, in the Northeast of, of the United States. So crocuses and tulips and daffs and all those beautiful spring flowers are starting to come up. And I love it when you guys post pictures. Please shower me with spring pictures. <laughs> so March 5th, it is 1026 AM, 69 degrees and mostly cloudy here in my little corner of the world. Um, it actually looks like it might be misting a bit out there too. It's a little chilly. I have my shawl on. I have my other shawl here too in case I decide I need it. I do have the, um, the overhead fan on because the loft does have a tendency to get a little hot as you might imagine. It's actually cooler than I expected though with the fan on but I don't want to turn it off because at any moment I could have a hot flash. <laughs> you know how that is. Um, let's see. So don't have a whole lot of news to share. Have a whole lot of other stuff to share. So um, let's see. Dick, my father-in-law, I believe his procedure is today to get the Watchman device placed in his heart. They've pretty much ruled out everything else. And even though, I don't know whether we ever actually got the results of the pill cam. They weren't expecting to see much. Um, but regardless, they are going to be putting this device that will in that will eliminate the need for blood thinners because they really do, like I said, they've ruled out everything else. They're pretty sure this must be a GI bleed because of all the transfusions that he needs. A GI bleed somewhere that, that they can't detect and um, the GI bleeds are caused by blood thinners. So this device that they're putting in eliminates the need for blood thinners and it will go um, far down the road to making him feel better. So I believe that procedure is today. We haven't heard anything from my mother-in-law in the past couple of days. So anyways, keep those prayers, those good thoughts, those healing vibes, just, just keep sending them to Scottsdale, Arizona. I do appreciate it. Um, thanks to everyone who um, chimed in on my Stitch With Me video saying how much you enjoyed Mike's company. <laughs> he, he, he got a giggle out of that. <laughs> he gets a giggle out of a lot of things, but you got to giggle out of that. I can pretty much guarantee that he will be, um, he will be taking part in future videos because I do plan on doing more out on the beach like that. I, I think that was just really nice, and I think a lot of you do, did too. Um, enjoyed the little glimpse of the beautiful waves and the sunny weather with the snow coming down. I sure hope this is over soon. I know a lot of you have had a miserable winter. Um, 
So yeah, we, we got a giggle out of that. Mike and I do have a fantastic relationship. We um, actually worked together for 10 years before anything romantic happened between us. So there is a depth of mutual respect and friendship there, a foundation that um, was there long before anything else and for many years before anything else. We've been through a lot of crises together, a lot of 24-hour shifts, a lot of um, very stressful situations, and a lot of really good situations where we really helped out some decision makers in the government. You know, when you know you're contributing, it, it means something and, and that kind of creates a bond. So yeah, and we just, we just always have a good time. He was the senior analyst in our office and I was the senior linguist um, so there was a lot of back and forth that went on between us um, he was also kind of became my go-to guy I was the senior linguist and kind of the team chief of the team of linguists and anytime there was anything going on on my team that I just needed to blow off some steam I would head up to his desk and he would see me coming and he would say now what there's still a little bit of that that goes on now, but he pretty much knows now what, <laughs> everything that's going on, of course. Um, so yeah, yeah, we have a lot of fun together. Um, let's see. Stitching floss tube noob, yeah, definitely is misting out there now. Good day to stay in and do a floss tube. Um, fiber talk. If you don't follow fiber talk either as a podcast or here on floss tube, I highly recommend it. Gary Parr spent all of his time at Nashville at the Needlework Market interviewing a bunch of the different designers. He, he by no means reached them all. He may still be uploading videos. I've, I've watched a bunch of them. I think I've watched pretty much all of them. Really, really neat way to get a glimpse of the designers' new designs, to get some insight into what brought about the design. Um, and just you know really interesting to to see kind of the workings of the market when you can't be there so gary parr fiber talk on floss tube um just a great way to get an insight into the the i would say the handwork community at large um across all the different type of media uh floss tubers new floss tubers to me i didn't really watch much but the one that i did watch is a must stitching in doodah their names are donna and shauna they are kindergarten teachers at the same school across the hall from each other i believe um they did their first video last year at StitchCon. so i watched their first one and i watched their most recent one which was i believe their 11th i don't know where i've been they are fantastic they are funny they are real um as kindergarten teachers they're light-hearted sometimes silly um irreverent their their stitching is fun they do other crafts i mean just it's a great package deal they do say up front they're they do swear like I said, they are irreverent, so if that's not your thing, stay away. But if that doesn't bother you, make sure you check out Stitching and Doodah. Um, they immediately went on my subscribe list, but of course everybody goes on my subscribe list. I can't possibly watch everybody. There's so many people that I am so behind on, but I don't want to take anybody off of my subscribe list because I love you all. So what do you do? I hit here and there when I can, and I add new ones when I can, and... I just keep plugging along. So let's see, forgive the hair today. Um, I, have a, I have an appointment on Sunday for a haircut. Um, my bangs are just getting so long, they're falling in my face. I would have been messing with them through the video. That would have pissed you off. Well, maybe not pissed you off, but I know some of you don't like that. So I just plugged them back. Makes us all happier. All right, so what do we got going on? Um, no finishes. No surprise there. So I have my whips. I'm going to show you today the fabric I picked out for my 10, count them, 10 new starts for my birthday. <laughs> so the plan is 
for the week, Monday through Friday of my birthday, so next Monday, I'm gonna do two new starts a day. I'm going to do a stitch with me for every new start. The stitch will, with me will probably only be 10 or 15 minutes long at the longest, um, but twice a day, and then I'll, I'll stop and I'll probably stitch a couple hours and then start the other one. Not sure how the timing will work out, but we shall see. Um, my birthday Tuesday itself is going to be kind of weird because I do have my doctor's appointment in the morning and we're going to go out. I decided not on not to go to the Star of Honolulu cruise at this point. Um, Samuel, my older son, texted me that he needs an alignment and a new tire. Um, he needed to buy clothes for a job interview and we're trying to help him out as much as possible as he gets transitioned from school to um, finding a real job just like we did for my other son um, so I'd rather have my my money for that instead instead of spending it on the cruise I'd rather it go to Samuel so we're, we're just gonna go out to lunch or whatever dinner ice cream will be on the menu um, so yeah, somewhere in there we'll get a couple videos done on my birthday as well. So that, and then I also have a stack, a veritable stack of things to give away. So the plans for that is I'm announcing them here. In one of my videos next Tuesday on my birthday, I will be giving gifts to you. So I will be announcing who the winner is. Okay, so I think that's everything. Let's get started started um all right grateful hearts made a little bit of progress again this is the one that i just work on a couple hours or an hour a day if i'm lucky an hour every other day something like that um several of you have been looking for this out there i don't know if you're going to be able to find it this is an old chart this is from it's going to be in the small print this is from 2000 so I don't know if it is available out there maybe on Etsy or um, eBay so I am working on this square up here which is the one over one section I have most of it done most of the rest of it done and I'm plugging away up here so the last time you saw it, I only I had the purple band done. I only had parts of this next two square line of brown done. So I got that done and I am working on the red background now. And you know, it does go, I mean, fairly fast, one over one on 28 count. Um, it does go fairly fast when I sit down. Like I got all of that done in an hour. So, um, you know, it goes fairly fast when I do sit down and do it. But I'm happy with that. And I will be continuing to plug away at that until it is done, like I said. Um, my other an hour here, hour there piece is Quilter's Cottage. This is the one that I showed you in my color work, how to choose colors videos making more bits and pieces of progress on it so from the last time you saw it i got the rest of this the back ground of this house done got the stoop done the roofs the chimneys started on the white and got the door done isn't that pink door just so pretty mm, i love my little pink door so slowly but surely still happy with the color still unsure of the window frame i'm thinking more and more i'm just going to keep the window frame i'm really liking how this cottage blue this is the um, gentle arts cottage blue if i remember correctly i love the bits of the um kind of like the dirty blue showing up i think it gives it that aged weathered cottagey look i'm almost tempted when I'm done to backstitch like every two or three rows backstitch lines to make it look like clapboard 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 is that how you pronounce that we'll see but yeah I'm, I'm really really liking that happy with everything so far 
All right, so my big piece that I worked on after last week's video, I brought this out and showed you, I believe, Grace Quaker. This Nana stitch is Tamara Bowen. She finished hers. She's the first of those of us who were working on this as a stitch along to finish, and it is gorgeous. She used a combination of two Gentle Arts threads, I believe. They might have been one of the other companies, but two of the variegated. One is more like an autumn leaf type, like greens and golds, and the other one was more golds. Really, really stunning how it turned out. So I am working down here on this last stint. I worked across here a little bit and worked on these over one, excuse me, alphabet and numbers. And here we go with this color again, fading in and out depending on how the light and what it thinks the white balance is. And that's what all this is about. The computer trying to figure out the white balance. That is the right color, that there. The more ro rosy, pinky with the overwash of gray on it. That's the right color. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> All right, so fold this down. This week I worked on these letters and number he numbers here and these down here. So those are over one. This is a 40 count fabric from Xju Designs called Ash Rose. So I got those done. And then I finished up this motif and I did everything else across here. So, grr, hard to hold it. So, all this is new. And I have to say, each little motif, it does, it's like a little tiny finish. It does go fast. Um, so it's another one that if, you know, if I kept working on it, it would get done pretty quickly. <laughs> Funny how that happens. Um, this motif here, this one, is exactly the same as this one, just cut in half. So I did the same with the colors as I did up there. Because if I don't have to think about a new setup for the for the uh, which colors I'm going to use where I'm not going to and that's really the hardest part of this <laughs> whenever you are picking your own colors deciding what you're going to use where and, and the biggest part for me and another tidbit on color for you is balance how to balance out all the different colors that I'm using so that across the piece there's a balance of the darks and the lights and the whites and the reds. The reds I was originally just going to use as spots of color, but I'm finding in each of the different motifs um, places where the, it'll work really nicely. Like down here, how could I not use red on the hearts, right? So, anyways, really, really happy with how that's coming along. The, the fabric, of course, XG Design does a gorgeous job on the fabric. Um, just love it all. All right, and then after Grace was um, the Linen and Threads Mystery Stitch Along for 2019. It is called A Peacock's Garden. I'm looking down at my phone because I've saved off a picture of it for those of you that haven't seen it yet. So the January section was the peacock, the February was all the borders, and March is this here. This piece is going really quickly for everybody that is actually caught up. I am so glad I decided to do that, to, to do this piece. I love that corner piece. I, I think it's just gorgeous. I love Mr. Peacock too though. So I'm very happy for all you people who kept showing your pictures and made it so I couldn't resist. I did get Mr. Peacock done. My shawl's falling off. So there's what I have done so far. This is mystery linen. This is linen that I've had in my stash for years and years and years. 
and I think it is perfect for Mr. Peacock. So I have in the Peacock, what, one, two, three, four different colorways. The green in the middle is a Victorian motto. This tealy blue is, um, oh, I'm not going to remember, a gassed ocean or something like that. Maybe a week's, I don't remember. This more modeled one is a Needle's Necessities, an old one that I had. And then this one here that comes down, and then it's the one that's wrapping around with this dotted section, the checkered board section. Um, I believe that's... I should have looked it up before, looked at them before. It's, I think, a week's. And then I used silver metallic for the crown. The purple is um, a Victorian motto, and the variegated in there is another of my old needle necessities that I have a ton of. So I am thrilled with Mr. Peacock. This is what the fabric looks like. Thrilled with the fabric too, quite frankly. <laughs> the lighter places are showing up lighter on screen than they really are in real life. Probably because there's a white wall behind them, but that's okay. So that one is going to be put away again um, until the next, like in a few weeks, probably longer than a few weeks since I have birthday in the middle of all this. The next one that comes out is Hoity Toity. And Hoity Toity, um, I don't know. Hoity Toity's, I think, at the bottom. I think it's the last one in the list. I may be tempted to work on that from now until my birthday starts. No, that's a long time. I'll probably go to whatever's number one on the list. So anyway, those are my current whips. Let's now talk about the birthday starts. So if you follow me on Instagram, you did see the combination of um, or the fabric that I pulled for everything. I am pretty much not pulling any floss um, except for the um, Lila Studio Summer since that was all variegated, over dyed. I pulled those. Sorry, my nose is itchy. Um, I also have been working on working out what I'm going to use for Jeanette Douglas's um, Hawaii piece. And that's that's been a bit of a chore. <laughs> I spent most of the morning yesterday, Sunday, Sunday morning, just looking through, trying to find. She, she, she calls for, um, let's see, she has Belle Soi, she has Gloriana, um, she has one silken colors from the thread gatherer. She has a couple accentuates and then some beads. And so I'm trying to find close equivalents in what I have. Stitch from stash, right? I wasn't successful with everything. Um, I am going to stop at the cross stitch store here, Fiddlesticks 2, and see if they have something that will work. I need to call and see if they have, well, okay. I need to call and see if they carry Accentuate, which is the Access Commodities metallic that this calls for, or if they have something that's equivalent. Um, I did look online. The only, in a quick search, the only online place I found that carries Accentuate is Needle in a Haystack in Alameda, California. Um, so I could order from them but I'd rather kind of see what I could get here um, in the store here first, even though it's probably more expensive. The Gloriana that I'm missing, um, I looked at it again on Needle in a Haystack. The colors are so pretty. I, I found some substitutes for some of them, but the Gloriana is so pretty. <laughs> I may just give in, even though it's $8 a skein at Needle in a Haystack. I don't know if they carry it here or not, and I hate to think, considering they doubled the price of the um, 
the gentle arts threads here. I hate to think what the silk threads would cost, but I'm going to call and see before I make a final decision. So anyway, let's start with that. So the Jeanette Douglas piece. And I've kind of copied off my working copy, so I have all kinds of things laying around here. Let me find the picture. All right, so the Jeanette Douglas piece, Aloha Hawaii. She did this for a cruise out of, out of Hawaii for the store here. And she has it filled with all kinds of the symbols that are Hawaii. Um, the hibiscus, the, the nini bird, I don't know how you pronounce that. The sea turtles, um, the fish and the, the humpback whale, the lei, surfboards of course, pineapples. Um, and she talks about the meaning of coffee plants. There's coffee plants here, there's pineapple plants, pineapples down here lots of specialty stitches she talks about the meaning of each of the items that she chose in the pattern so that's really cool her called for um, fabric uh, i don't have it right here on the page that's on top and i don't feel like pawing through this whole stack um, but it is a 32 count so I found a 32 count Murano in my stash that's a blue color that's similar to what she's showing in her pattern. So that's what I'm doing it on. And I do have, like I said, I went through and found things that I thought would work for the different things. And some of them I will still be sticking with, but I, I very well may get some of the silks. The Accentuate is a metallic, I'm going to have to see. I'm going to have to see where I can find it, see where it's used, and if I feel like I really need it or not, basically. I know it's held together with something else, so that is the Jeanette Douglas piece. Um, Lila's Studio Summer, like I said, I've already pulled the flaws for this. I'm using the same fabric that I used for spring. I have enough of the fabric, I believe, to use it for all four seasons. It, I believe it is the called for, yeah, 40 Count Heritage by Picture This Plus. So there's the fabric. And then I have all the flosses pulled for it. And I think I had I had them all, yeah. So we are good to go. There's actually three um, DMCs, as, and then the rest are General Arts. So I had all the General Arts, and I, I have all the DMC as well. So as I said, I'm not going to be pulling all the flosses for all the other ones. Everything else is um, DMC. I'm not pulling them all because realistically, I will probably only be working on these when I do the Stitch With Me starts for my birthday, for the birthday week. Um, so I'm not going to pull out all the floss. I'm just going to pull out every day what I need for my start. So just, you know, two or three colors, whatever's going to be right there for the start. And some of these I'll be starting in the middle. Some of these I'll probably be starting in whichever corner makes the most sense. So I'll, I'll just have to see what I need for that day and probably just use it and put it back because I'm not, who knows when I'll get back to these, right? I have my year of BAPS still going on. As I finish up smaller ones, I'll incorporate these in, but I know realistically speaking, they're not going to be um, worked on a lot until Until I get some things done. All right, I had everything stacked so nicely. Oh, this is the one I'm still waiting on. This is the one I'm getting the dark blue green um, fabric from Jackson Fa Fabric Arts in Arlington, Virginia. It has been shipped, it is not here yet. I did get, oh, excuse me. I did get the weaver's cloth for the punch needle. For those that don't remember, it is a Michelle Palmer punch needle. Hold on. 
on. It looks like this. It's called ranun ranunculus bouquet. Ranunculus is the type of flowers there. Most of these are DNC or DMC. Well, they're all DMC, but there's these ones here, like the one that's going pink to green, and this one that has oranges and yellows. Those are. 4800 and 4805 or 4803 I think um, DMC variations so I need to get those and I need to get multiples of some of them because punch needle does use up a lot let me see if I can get this to turn a lot of floss now one thing that I found I haven't you know traced the the design on the weaver's cloth yet the weaver's cloth just came yesterday or the day before um, I guess yesterday because it wouldn't have come Sunday anyway one thing that's interesting about Michelle Palmer um, that's different from other ones I've done. So that the only other designers that I've done, only other designer, is Kate Guillory of Briar Cottage Studio. And she is very careful whenever she has kind of um, oh, swirly areas. I don't know what to call them. But do you see all these color changes? In the background here and in the um, saltware here, Kate Guillory lines all those out in her pattern. So you're tracing all those color changes. Michelle Palmer does not. She writes on the on the pattern where those color changes are, but it's going to be up to me to kind of create the swirl myself. She, Michelle calls it painting with floss. I believe I'm up for the challenge. I also am going to have to be careful. You can see when she did the flowers, she did them in a circle, which adds to the beauty of this piece. So I'm going to have to be careful and do those all in a circle. So I'm, I'm excited to start that. I love that piece. And I have had my eye on it for a while. So that's the punch needle. Let's see what we have next. Come on. Oh, it would help if I turned it the right way. There we go. Um, this is going to be a good test to see if I remember everything. I'm going to turn this over. Um, what are you doing? Hold on. My photo album just spontaneously went to a different page. Technology. All right this one. Vitreous art number two. This is a Russian kit, Russian company, but I actually purchased this on Amazon. It did come with Ada. I am going to be using a piece of 32 count white antique white Jobelin. This is going to be over two I believe. I hope I did the math right. Anyways, this is a fairly small piece, so this is not this is not a big piece. I don't think I planned on doing this over one. You never know with me. I'll have to redo the calculations <laughs> when the time comes. Um, okay, this beauty. This is called Ohm. This is the one with a shit ton of backstitch. This is what I got. I'm trying to get it to f focus, not on my face, but on the pattern. There we go. This is the one that I got from um, an Etsy shop. Lola Lada shop, I believe, is what it's called. I will link it below. I wanted to be sure and get a gray fabric because there is all this backstitch. All this in the middle here is back stitch with no stitching behind it. So the fat, it's all, you know, it's all gonna be about the fabric. Now she did just use a plain gray Ada, which of course looks fine, but I'm not all, I'm not about plain, right? So I have this piece. There is no, oh yes, there is. This is 28 count dense fog Jobelin. This is one of the pieces from my friend who's I got the boxes from 
So where all those back stitches are, let's see which side, if there's a better side. Oh, they're both pretty cool, huh? I don't know whether I'll put the back stitching the head up here so that the back, the trunk is coming down here. Or whether I'd want the trunk to come down there. I mean, it's basically coming down through, or I guess just to the left of center, the whole way down through. So yeah, maybe it'll be over here then like this. Whichever, it's going to be way cool. That's probably the one I'll be starting first. Because I just... It, that's going to be a hard one to put down too. Oh, gorgeous. All right. Um, next then is the doors. And you'll remember I am starting with the spring door. I am going to be doing these over one on 28 count. Oh no, this is 25 count. I don't know whether this is a Linda. Again, I've had it in my stash for years and years. I went ahead and cut the piece I had into four pieces, four even pieces. And so all four of the doors will go on this. And I'll be starting with the spring one. So that will be a really cool set. Let's see, then we have Aloha. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Hold on. It's not ah, being still enough and let me enlarge it. So you'll remember, remember Aloha. There's still a discussion going on about what to replace the toucan with. Somebody did also um, recommend the Bird of Paradise flower. And that may be what I go with because I can find Bird of Paradise charted on Etsy and hopefully find one that will fit in there with some filling in of the background. So for Aloha, I am using a piece of the same fabric that I stitched Harbor Haven on. This is a 28 count linen and I think it'll be gorgeous for Aloha. Um, I do have one more piece of this left. This was another big piece that um, I basically cut it lengthways and used the bottom half for a low, for Harbor Haven. So I have more of this left. And the other piece of this has like this, only much more darker and saturated in one area. So I'm not sure what, I think I had something in mind for that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Um, Pretty Little Hawaii. This is the same fabric, just a white 36 count linen that um, I'm doing Pretty Little India on. So that was an easy one. And then I have one more piece here that must be, oh, this is for, yeah, that's for the peonies. Okay. So you'll remember those pretties. Now they used kind of a bluish grayish background and I decided I wanted something, um, I wasn't sure whether I wanted a green or a pink or just what. But what I found in my stash, 40 count maritime white. This is from Lakeside Linen. This is a piece that I got at Keepsakes in October when we stopped there. This is a really, really hard fabric to see the colors on. 
you can kind of see there's some greens in in my eyes greens and some just very pale peaches and pinks I mean just touches very very light so it, I don't think it comes across in the camera at all you can kind of see uh, some greens I think um, but anyways that's what peonies is going on so 40 count it'll be a very nice petite little piece that's the birthday starts I really don't have any um, stash of course however dot 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 <sighs> my dear friend Lynette in Australia we were talking back back and forth on Instagram the other day and she said did you see the March freebie from cross stitch collectibles she threw out the line I said no, cross stitch collectibles? I don't think I'm familiar with that. They do fractal freebies every month. She starts to reel me in. Fractals? I like fractals. <laughs> can I find them if I search on cross stitch collectibles? You sure can. Hook, line, sinker. Now it's a freebie. I don't know when I'll start it. I am so tempted to add it to my year of baps. I mean, is that gorgeous? Oh my God. It's not real big. It is, um, let's see, on 18 counts, so 36 counted, be four and a quarter by 11 inches um, for the finished design size. So that's not, well, you know, but. So yeah, I don't have the fabric for it. I would just use, you know, a piece of white or whatever. Um, I might have something I could use actually, because we don't care about the background color. Anyway, thank, thank you, Lynette. <laughs> But that leads me to another thing I've become obsessed with. Carolyn Manning Designs. Now, I've known about Carolyn Manning Designs for a while. I do love a lot of her patterns. I've never done one. I don't own any. I love her Garden la Labyrinth, um, the seasonal ones. There's something else. Stitching and Doodah. They're both doing the Granny is No Square design, and um, Shauna is doing the, what is it, Flower a Day design. Stunning pieces, just amazing pieces. But the ones that I've been tripping over are her crazy quilt ones. Now, as I was working on great, the one over one on the Grateful Hearts piece this week, it struck me that it has the same feel, the same vibe, as the Crazy Quilts by Carolyn Manning. The different sections with different patterns. I love these. And she has like one for every month. I've just saved off a few of them. Is that gorgeous? And then the buttons, I could use my button stash from buttons that were my mother's and my grandmother's. Whoops, get back here. Again, I don't own any of these yet. This is the November one, or the October one, I'm sorry. Look at that little ghost. Is he, You know I'm not that, that much into Halloween, but I just love that little ghost peeking over there. So yeah, I don't own any of these yet. But there may be one in my not-too-distant future. Carolyn Manning Designs. I'm doing good so far with Stitch from Stash. Yes, I've been buying, I bought stuff for my birthday. Yes, I still have some fibers to buy for my birthday, but so far, like all the stuff from, from Market, um, I, I told you last week, there's not a whole lot that's catching my eye, but there are some, and there are some I'm crushing on hard. Watching the Fiber Talk videos yesterday, um, and this morning, I was up at five o'clock this morning, so. I was stitching on the peacock and watching Gary Parr on Fiber Talk. 
Um, I'm not much into samplers, but there's a lot of samplers that were released for this market that are kind of unusual, not your typical sampler, that are just stunning. There's a new to me one that I saw. Um, oh, I'm not remembering. Teresa Baird. Baird is her last name, Heart's Ease. She's doing samplers, or she's done several samplers and is doing more that kind of represent the first 13 colonies. Just stunning. The colors, houses, huge houses. I know, I know. All right, moving along from my gushing about patterns. We have, I think the last thing, I don't think I've forgotten anything. We have the giveaways. So, as always, don't say giveaway in your comment. You must be 18 years or older so you can give me your address. I will be announcing the winners next Tuesday. I will be telling you, there's a bunch, and I will be telling you what to say in the comment. You may want to take notes or you may have to replay. You are welcome to um, request several of them. You will only win one. There is another bundle of Ada here. The person that won the Ada the last time will not win it this time. I do still have my list, so I will make sure that I don't, I don't know what the odds are that I pull the same name, but just in case we want to spread the wealth. All right, so let's get started. Hoops. I have two hoops. You know I don't use hoops. Um, I bought these for punch needle, but they do not hold the fabric tight enough for punch needle. So they are going to be given to a good home. If you are interested in the hoops, say, I want the hoops. Ada. These are all the pieces of Ada that came from the kits I got that I've replaced, replaced the fabric. This is a 14 count. It is a fairly open Ada. I left the needle in it. This is, I believe, more of an 18 count. Fairly good size. And this is a huge piece. I don't know what this was in. I don't know which kit this would have been in. The edges are all nicely surged. I believe this is a 14 count as well. It's a big square piece. I don't know what it was in. Anyway, if you are interested in the Ada, please say, I love Ada. Now we get up to the patterns that I've finished. Now, a slight um, caveat with some of these. I am not the best <laughs> at making working copies. I am for the most part, but the ones that I've started, like more for the more recent starts, but ones that I may have started a while ago, I didn't like, I didn't think of making working copies. But I think these ones are for the most part okay. All right, first, playing with jacks. This is the pattern that has the alternative face for the center, or the, the alternative um, pattern design for the center pumpkin. If you want this one, please say, I like jacks, J-A-X, because that's what I'll be searching on. J-A-X, I like jacks. It's a great pattern, a great stitch. Next, we have the Little Welcome Spring by Little House Needleworks. That's the one that I just recently framed and put out right there, that little tiny one that I did over one. If you like this one, say, I like spring. That's true for everybody, right? Lizzie Kate's Life, a Life is a Beach. This was a kit. This is the one that I worked on on the trip across the country out to the Hawaiian Islands on our house hunting trip. This is also the one I did over one. This is just the pattern. If you like this one, say, I like the beach. Do you see a theme here? Wilhelmina. 
you've seen my Wilhelmina. This is one that, um, well, I've done a little bit of writing here on alternative flosses. I can erase that. That's in pencil. I have outlined the center stitch in pen, though, but other than that, there's no other markings. I like Wilhelmina, if you like this one, if you would like this one. I like Wilhelmina. And last but not least, this is one I got from the Stitching Post. Happy Red Crab. I just decided that it doesn't thrill me. I'm just, I, no, nah, I just don't want to do it. So, if you're interested in this one, say, I like the crab. And that one actually takes, yeah, that's charted all in DMC. All right. One other thing, totally off topic, um, but just FYI for anybody out there who may have been um, wondering and waiting like me, Southwest has opened its flights to Hawaii. They are at this point only flying out of um, two California airports, Oakland and San Jose. They have a special, like they opened them Monday. So I think they just started last night putting them up for sale. If you buy a ticket today, by the end of today, they have flights going for $49 out of one of those airports to Honolulu. Somebody messaged me on Instagram and said that, um, I guess they live close to one of those flight, one of those airports, $209 from one of those airports to Honolulu, just I guess in general. For me flying from here, we need to fly into San Diego. Well, actually, we don't need to fly into San Diego. I just saw an email pop up from my, from my mother-in-law that said, we had originally, when I come out there for StitchCon, we had originally been planning to fly into San Diego. San Diego was supposed to be one of the originating airports for Southwest and I guess eventually they'll get there and drive their RV. My in-laws have their RV stored at the San Diego KOA. We were supposed to be driving it back to Phoenix for them. But I just saw an email pop up that said they decided to keep it there over the summer. Although we're going to flank, they're supposed to go to Flagstaff with us. Oh, they rented a cabin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just stream of consciousness happening here, people. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyways, um, flights to Hawaii on Southwest have opened. The prices are fantastic. If you are a Southwest person that has a, a Southwest card and you get points, even better. We'll be using a lot of our points to fly the boys out here to visit us sometime this summer. Um, and of course, at some point for my trip out there, um, for StitchCon and, and to visit our, my in-laws. Anyways, good news. Price wars, let them begin. I think that's everything. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all your wonderful comments. Again, you guys touch me and you give me back so much more of the joy, of the thrill, of the peace then I give out. My joy this week, definitely the Southwest flights, definitely the comments from my um, Stitch With Me with Mike. Um, I'd like to say my Cairo appointment yesterday. My back isn't feeling too bad this morning. We shall see. Anyways, guys, have a great week. I will be back again probably before my birthday for a Stitch With Me. You can probably count on seeing me at some point during the week. <laughs> Until then, love you, have a great week, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.